This was former New Jersey governor and 2024 presidential candidate Chris Christie's response to whether Donald Trump will show up to the 2024 presidential debates. Two reasons. One, I'm not afraid of him. And two, it's the truth. Do you think he'll show up you to bet, those early you debates? Bet, you bet he will. His ego will not be able to stop him. Or if he skips the first one, that'll be fine. Let him skip the first one. That'll give me absolute free, free lane. We'll do that once, Anderson. He'll be at the second one. Christy also weighed in on Trump's recent federal indictment. The, his employees were scared. They always call them his boxes. His boxes. He wants his boxes near him. He flew the boxes up to New Jersey for summer vacation. What is this, like they're a family member? I mean, seriously, I got to have my boxes with me. And let me ask you a question. What exactly was he doing with them? Did someone remind him he's not the president anymore? You don't need these things anymore. This is vanity run amok, Anderson. Run amok. Ego run amok. And he is now going to put this country through this when we didn't have to go through it. Everyone's blaming the prosecutors. He did it. It's his conduct. So I watch most of the town hall, and I'm always wary of saying that, uh, predicting that what I thought was good politics or good optics or I agreed with is necessarily going to be popular or going to catch fire. I thought Christie did a pretty good job in this town hall. I thought he uh, very eloquently presented the Republican case for dumping Trump, for saying, you know, he conceded that law enforcement has been weaponized against Trump. He said he thought Hillary should have been charged. He said all those things. He, he said, uh, you know, the Russia collusion nonsense, all of that he condemned, but said, look, the, the case against Trump in the classified documents matter is very strong. Bill Barr concedes it's very strong. Everyone being at least a little fair concedes it's pretty strong. And it was totally chosen by Trump himself. He had every opportunity to just give the documents back, as the other political figures did, and then he wouldn't be prosecuted. And you know, why do you, why do you, want, why do you Republican primary voters, want the guy who like willfully got himself into this position where we have to have sure. this whole, this whole um, circus again? Um, he so that he made that case. Um, the problem is so far, Republican primary voters have shown absolutely no interest in this case. Yeah, I can tell whatsoever. Robbie, I can tell from those clips. He's standing there doing the Chris Christie like stand up hour, like Seinfeld in front of a brick wall, and the audience response is zero engagement. There are no laughs coming from this performance. Even I think there was a chuckle now and then. Though if you can hear an isolated chuckle from the audience, you're not doing well, it. I, I, I mean, CNN <laughs> picked that audience. For all I know, it's full of, uh, I don't know. Did Democrats. they not also pick the <laughs> Donald Trump CNN? Well, Donald maybe audience? after maybe after that happened, they're like, let's make sure there's no cheering for a Republican ever. But again. they obviously no. Maybe they Resistance said, uh, libs love Chris Christie and yeah. want him to be successful. Chris Christie is on MSNBC more than he is Fox News. I think he has a, an MSNBC contract. There, if anything, they are setting him up for a win. So presuming even you know, I think it's safe to. to guess that they, to the extent that they might have rigged the audience, it would be in Chris Christie's favor, a favorable audience, to still not get very much buy-in, I think is a omen of how the broader Republican field is going to react. Here's the thing. He, Chris Christie the has worse though, poll, you know, approval among Republicans than Trump does. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that the, the thing is, it's not clear that Chris Christie's goal is to win. It could be that he's in there to take the heat, to, to throw the bombs at Trump, to make the affirmative argument. He knows there's going to be backlash, but he can be kind of like the, the black hole that absorbs all of the backlash from Donald Trump while getting the stuff that needs to be said out there that can be damaging to him. In a similar way that, you know, in the 2020 primary, Elizabeth Warren didn't go very far herself, but she did take out Bloomberg. Or Tulsa Gabbard didn't go very far herself, but mm -hmm. she took out Kamala Harris. Yeah, that's the theory. That's what he suggested. Um, I don't know that that's going to be the case at all. Um, again, Republican primary voters, have they stuck with Trump after um, 2018 was a bad uh, result for them. Then Trump was defeated for re-election in 2020. Then January 6th. Then horrific 2022 results specifically for the Trumpiest, most servile of Trump candidates. Um, you know, here we are. There's been a lot of potential off ramps for for Republican voters, and they've never taken them. Are they going to take them now? I have my doubts. 
Um, if they are going to take them now, Christie is making the case, right, that you should you come to me. I'm a Republican. Now, there will be policy um, issues leveled at him. He is a more He's still very conservative, but he's you know he was a blue state governor, northeasterner. Um, he's uh, he was law, in law enforcement. He was a you know he's a prosecutor. Um, he whether he kind of temperamentally background wise mm -hmm. kind of jives with where the Republican electorate at, is at, I think is also uh, probably a serious question. So for all those reasons, I, I think he is has utterly no chance of being the guy. But. But look, yeah. I, like him, think that Republican voters would do themselves a lot of good even in advancing their own conservative interests by pivoting from, not necessarily to Christie, but from someone other than Trump. Yeah, and to your point but, about there being all of these controversies to, over the course of the last five years and so many Republicans st staying by Donald Trump for the duration, Chris, Christie was asked last week mm -hmm. why the flip-flop? Why did he support Trump all of this time, and why is it coming out so strongly against him now? And he says, turns out I was wrong. I couldn't make him a better candidate, and I couldn't make him a better president. Uh, uh, then he disappointed me. That's what he told Jake Tapper. Um, and, you know, I don't know if that squares. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, think, I don't know if people are going to see this as anything other than opportunism or his former support of Donald Trump as opportunism. I, I heard the, the guys on Pots of America joking that maybe it was uh, the fact that Donald Trump gave Chris Christie COVID and sent him to the hospital and that this they, they joked that that was the most literal deathbed conversion <laughs> <laughs> there's ever been. Um, uh, Christie actually said in that town hall that uh, while he was, so he got real sick with COVID, yeah. um, that, uh, that Trump called him while he was in the hospital and he said, and Trump asked him, he said, do you, do you think you got it from me? Are you, are you going to tell people you think you got it from me? And, and Christie says that he said, no, well, I, I don't know if I, you know, there was five, there were six of us in that room. Five of us got COVID. I don't know who gave it to who. I'm not, I'm not going to make that claim. Uh -huh. and Trump says, okay, okay, we'll feel better. And then later he finds out that Trump is telling people that Christie gave him COVID. <laughs> So maybe that really, maybe that really was it. Uh, I mean, look, so, so Chris Christie, I think no one really has any expectation that he's going to go very far. And yet, it's also worth noting that he did get a CNN town hall. Nikki Haley got a town hall. Yeah, Donald Trump doing, obviously got a town hall. They're doing town halls. Are we going to get that RFK Jr., Marianne Williamson, dare I say, Cornell West town hall? Certainly we should. It's, it would be inexcusable not to. I don't know whether they will pull the trigger on that, but <laughs> based on what they're doing, it would be utterly hypocritical to not do that. They for 100% should. They're treating Republican challengers to Trump who are as long shot, as much a long shot as RFK or Marianne are. Much less. People pulling at 1% or right. less are getting town halls, whereas Marianne's been at 11, RFK Jr.'s been at 20%. Yeah. Come on. Um, you say it's an inexcusable, but that hasn't stopped them in the past. We'll see if there's any degree of public pressure that can make both CNN, other networks, and Elon Musk fulfill their promises to offer their platforms equally across the people in this race. Uh, now, that's all we have on that topic. Tomorrow on Rising, Gallup's Mohammed Yunus will join us here in the Rising studio to discuss very interesting new polling on how Americans feel about transgender issues. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who prefer to listen while you're on the go, we are now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. See you later. Bye-bye.